Spumpy and leaving visitor center. Whoa. I said the sun is bright there, fella. Ah, we have a beautiful gator over here. Hey, I'll make a deal with somebody, okay? Is everybody game? I'm gonna pull alongside the ramp. If anyone who wants to go out there and wrestle the alligator, we'll give you a free pass to Homosassa Springs Wildlife State Park for you and your family if you happen to win. But I want to remind you, he hasn't lost a bout in about six months. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Judd? No takers. No takers today, Judd. No takers. He's a nice guy. He's only up close to eight feet. And again, good morning, folks. As soon as we leave this noisy US-19, we'll give you more information on the Homosassa Springs Wildlife State Park. As we make the left-hand turn, if you all look to your right by the hotel, you see a couple of tall palm trees. Those are sable palm, brown estate also known as cabbage palm. All right, this is a fresh body of water called Pepper Creek. Pepper Creek gets its name from the famous Native American word, the Bobo's House. Yeah, what do we have in front of us? What was that? The Hinga? Yeah. Which means home of the wild peppers. Now, Pepper Creek runs west from the Homo Sassa River. Then the Homosassa River runs west to the Gulf of Mexico, about nine miles. Homosassa River gets its water from Homosassa Springs at a rate of 2.5 million gallons of water per hour. Average annual temperature, 72 degrees year-round. That's why the manatees come here in the wintertime when the Gulf water gets below 68. And the other day somebody told me that when I was working in a gift shop that they saw a whole bunch of manatees in the main springs. It must be had a couple of cold days, folks. But we do have three resident manatees that they are here. They're in the main manatee pool and this is where they do the manatee program. Pepper Creek gets its water from the underground aquifer, many springs. Also, at an average under temperature, 72 degrees year-round. If I were to feel real nice to stick your feet in 70, I just ran over somebody. Judge, will you go pick him up? Nope. Okay, leave him there. Where was I? Oh, oh yeah, boy. Pepper Creek. <laughs> gets its water from the underground aquifer, many springs. Also on an average on your temperature, 72 degrees. Yeah, right. The body feel real nice to take your feet in 72 degree water some days. But I wouldn't do that if I were you. We have gators and snakes on this creek. You happen to see one, but there's a few more on here. I'm not going in the water to get it for you, for sure. Now, Homosassa Springs Wildlife State Park, when it was private meal, it was an exotic park. Yeah, tigers, lions, monkeys, and whatnot. In 1989, when the state bought the park from the county, and the county purchased it from one of the private developers in 84, at that time, the governor of Florida was who? Does anybody know? Nobody knows. It was Lawton Child. Somebody got a right on my last boat. He said, I want to make this a wildlife park, but only Native Islands from Florida. So he got rid of the monkeys, the tigers, the lions, the different parts throughout the country. But he had one huge problem. He had a 6,000 pound eating machine by the name of Lucifer. We call him Lou for short. He's a hippopotamus. He says, well, I got rid of all those other animals, but I can't get rid of this guy. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. So he pondered. A couple of years later, he says, well, I think I just came up with a solution. Why don't we just keep him in the park? But the governor, to keep him in the park, since he was not native, he said, I have to make him an honorary citizen of the state of Florida. So we signed a declaration to that effect. That is a very true story, folks. Matter of fact, you can read all that information when you get to the park and see it, and you also can read it online. And he's the only animal that has been made on of any since in the state of Florida. Lou came to us from the San Diego Zoo when he was six years old. This past January, does anybody know how old? No, nope. somebody guessed it on my other boat. Ah. He turned 57, so he's been here for 51 years. In the wild, they only lived on about 30 or 35. How that came about is when he got rid of all those other animals, as recently got rid of Lou, the citizen of Sipis County had a hissy fit, who got a petition. 
got hundreds of thousands of signatures. And the Senate and the governor, he put it in front of the legislature. And as they say, the rest is history, folks. Oh, my God, we have a monkey on board. How in the world did that monkey get on board that boat? Hey, did you come close enough to Palm Island that the monkeys jumped on board? Okay, we won't give you bananas today. He's funny. Little girl is waving to the monkey. I know. <laughs> Now, Homer Sasso Springs Wildlife State Park is one of the 174 state parks in the state of Florida. And it is also a wildlife park where you are guaranteed to see wildlife once you enter the park at the West Entrance. Pepper Creek is also wildlife. But you must hear Pepper Creek. No clue, folks. The animals come and go as they please. We do not stop or feed any of the animals on the creek. Now, we have to drive these boats, folks. They're not on any rail of any kind, like when somebody's on the park. So, if I happen to get too close to somebody, these bushes along the side. I will tell you to duck quickly. And also, if you happen to look above your head and you see some great looking stuff hanging from the street, that is Spanish moss. But guess what? That's no Spanish and that's not even a moss. That happens to be an airplane. And it is in the pineapple family. I bet some of you did not know that. Guess what? You definitely know now. All right, coming up there, way up there in front of us, and this is on your left as we pass, is a box with a little tiny hole in it. That is a wood duck nesting box. Female wood duck flies into that little tiny hole. She has been clocked at about 20 miles per hour. Stops on the dime, drops on the bottom of the box, and she will lay between 10 to 14 eggs. In about 28 days, they will hatch. Out of all those eggs, maybe only a couple will survive. The rest of them are eaten by the predators on the creek with the snakes, the raccoons, the possum, or any other predator. And that's why we have the silver phone shield at the bottom of the box for their protection. Also on your left as we pass is called Paul Iron. That was man-made by a private developer in 1964 when he dredged this creek so these boats could go up and down safely. One boat was up one side, the other boat will come up the other because as you can see it is too narrow. Two of us can up one side by side. We're on a three-boat schedule today. You guys wondering how come I cross without the top? The reason for that is because it's a little bit wider, a little bit deeper over there. Any place else, as you can see, is very narrow. Now, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, when the Native Americans roamed this area, at that time, there were two types of Native Americans. If you flew Florida, you all should know one of them. The Seminole. Who said Seminole? There you go. Do you know the other, sir? There's the Calusa. Now, did you know that the Seminole have never saw the peace treaty with the United States government, and they probably never will. What would they? They got it made. And there's a big reservation down in Hollywood, Florida, in a big cypress swamp, the Everglades. I don't see any yellow belly or red belly sliders, done. Jump, jump, huh? All right, on your right-hand side over here, you see a bunch of trees hanging over the water at about 45 degrees. Those are red cedar trees. Same trees you make cedar cabinets and cedar jet pump. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. They ought to supply the wood for the number two pencils. Now you know where it comes from. You ought to raise your hand to be used number two pencils. Hey, hey, we got a few. All right, all right. I guess the rest of us use computers, right? Right. All right, we're going to come up on an opening shot here. Now we'll slow the boat down. Now we'll turn the boat to the left to your left. And you will see the tallest pine tree in the park. Don't look now. I'm not even there yet. 20 to 30 feet from the top in the crotch of that tree. You're going to see a bunch of twigs and whatnot. That is an osprey nest. So we call this osprey island. Now osprey's made for life. And you're still looking. Same pair of ospreys been coming here for almost 30 years, so the nest is the same age. Ospreys are also called fish hawks. Usually the male will come down first part of the year to make all the necessary repairs. Mama comes late if she likes what she sees. She will stay in there between two and four eggs. If she doesn't, she'll definitely tell them. Once she repairs the nest, she will come back. Now, they lay, she lays the eggs anytime between January and the end of February. The incubation period for those eggs is about 35 days. The chicks learn how to fly between 40 and 60 days, and when that happens, the chicks will fly away. If they will not return to this, they will make, they have to make their own. And when that happens, the parent says, okay, you guys know how to fly, we're out of here. You're on your 
road. Then the parents fly away. One parent will fly in one direction, the other parent will fly in the other direction. They will not meet again here at the same location till the following year. I'm telling you folks, that's a beautiful relationship. Now, now you all can look way to your left and see the tall pine tree with the osprey nest. I haven't seen the osprey in a couple of weeks. And we have more some yellow belly or red belly sliders to your left over here on these rocks and uh, logs in the water. Now you all have to pay attention to this. Pay attention, please. When we get to the west entrance to get into the park, Y'all have to cross a busy road. Name of the road is Fishbowl Drive. To cross that road, we have a couple of concrete columns, one on the right and one on the left. There's a control box. I'm working in with a silver circle. I suggest you press the silver circle box so you can change the flow of traffic because the cars, the trucks, the motorcycle, whatever that they, they do not stop. So when you get to that corner, don't just stand there and wait for the light to change. No, 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 it will not. Remember I said, you have to cross the road to get to the park with the building across the way with the double doors. And we also have a gift shop and a snack bar on this side. If you need to get something to eat or something to drink, you can go to the snack counter, check the menu board in order for one of the people on the counter. And we also have a couple other facilities in the park where one of them you can get water, soda, juice, Gatorade, ice cream, and potato chips or whatever else she has. And the other one you get giant sub pretzel. Both of those facilities are open now. If you need to purchase a gift or a souvenir for yourself or for someone else, you can go to the gift shop. Vicky is in the gift shop all day today at 5.30. By right the way, the park is open to 5.30 every day, 365 days a year. And that includes Christmas Day, New Year's Day, Labor Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, Veterans Day, President's Day. I had a lady in December say to me, are you open for Christmas? I said, ma'am, isn't that included in 365 days? Uh, oh. I was here that day. I didn't buy boats, but I worked in a gift shop. Oh, by the way, I do also work in a gift shop three or four days a week on this gift shop on the West End. And we also are open when it rains. No, we don't buy boats because you won't get wet. But if you all come to the gift shop on those days, I'll definitely send you a bunch of I want to make also one correction. We were not open this past Labor Day because we had the Hurricane Harvey here, Category 1 storm, because the park, the park sustained more than three feet of water, and the boats were not running for about two or three weeks because they had all kinds of debris in the creek and they had to remove it, and the only way to get here is by boat. They can't put any other equipment in there. Like this tree on the right, that came down during the hurricane, so it stays here. All they did is clear out the middle of the the channel so we can uh, operate these boats. Other than that, it stays where it is. And also we are a non-smoking state park. And also please do not feed the wildlife. As I said, we're on a three boat schedule today, folks. Boats run every 20 minutes for minor location. And if you do not want to take this boat back or any other boat back to the business center, you can catch the tram. The tram station is the covered pavilion next to the boat dock. The tram will run all day long, up to 5.30 until everybody's out of the park. Folks, on behalf of all the volunteers in the park, we have over 400 volunteers. Some of us drive boats, some of us drive trams, some of us do other duties like journal base, taking pictures. I want to thank you for riding with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope both the programs that you will see are beneficial and you learn something from them. And the next program of the day is the first manatee program at 11.30. And again, thank you. You have a wonderful day. You all come back down here. I want to thank that gentleman in the front row to my right. He was willing to pass the hat to collect gas money when I got to the gas station. But guess what, sir? We made it here on one tank of gas. I'm telling you folks, these electric motors get good gas mileage. Oh yeah, by the way, and I haven't lost no one so far today. But I still have one more boat to run. But about a year and a half or so ago, and we won't discuss that because I'm still looking understand. for those two people. I ain't found them yet. All right, folks, I'm fixing to bring this boat in, so please everybody remain seated till I put the boat safely into the dock, put the gangplank dock, 
Then you walk into some off safety. And again, thank you, and you have a wonderful day today. I know Masasa Springs, Wildlife Stay Farm.